Hey everyone, welcome back to the virtual classroom. Today I just want to take a quick minute to show you my favorite virtual library and how I use it in my classroom. So let's get started. It's called Get Epic. I love it. It's clean. It's easy. Uh, it's user friendly. Uh, it's really great for kids. Uh, there's lots of things you can do with it. So I'll just start. We'll start at the back end and work our way forward. But this is what a typical front page looks like. Uh, so once you're to this point, you can assign books, you can make it your favorite, you can, um, uh, when you assign them, I should say more about that. When you assign them, you can assign them to your whole class, assign it to just one kid or as many in between as you want. You can hide a book, but I don't understand why you would, but to each their own, if you want to hide it, hide it. Uh, you can make it your favorite. Uh, you can create a quiz. I think some books, more popular books have quizzes already made, but a lot of them don't. And so, but if you want to make a quiz, by all means. Um, and then here you can uh, make a recommendation to others, like send it to others or uh, view that copyright loft. So when I'm reading this, uh, when I share a book with my kids, uh, this is typically what I do. So I will either uh, share it like this, uh, where I app share it, or if I want my kids to manipulate the content, uh, the content, whether like highlight the main idea of sentence or highlight or circle the words that are antonyms or compare and contrast, I will take a little snippet using my snip and snitch tool on my desktop and and then put that in like Desmos or on my uh, Blackboard Collaborate is which what we use um, at in a K-12 school or, or New Row if it's in the future whenever you're watching this. But that's what I do. Uh, so I'm not breaking, I don't think I'm breaking any copyright laws because I'm not massively just recording this out and sending it to the world. My kids have 100, all my kids have access to this. So when I'm doing this in class, all my kids in class have access to this book and I, in, in a way more so than a kid in a traditional classroom would for a read aloud. Uh, they would not have, you just have that one book and you're reading it to the whole class. My, in this case, all my kids have access to this book. So anyway, let's go back. Uh, so it's how do you get here? So the site is called Get Epic um, and the educator, it's 100% of the time free for you as a teacher. And then it's free for your kids to use between the hours of 6 and 4 p.m. on school days, so Monday through Friday. However, right now, Epic is, because of the coronavirus and school shutting down, they are offering it 100% free, 24-7, as long as you already have an account made and you put in their parents' email addresses. So I'm going to assume that you sign up and you go through the walkthrough that that Get Epic does. Um, they're really good about that, about walking you through and setting up your classroom. And they'll give you a part where you put in your kids' uh, parents' email addresses. And when you do that, it gives them free access to it until June 31st, the end of June, whatever that is, of uh, this year, 2020. So once you're there, um, it will I'll give you a, let me go back. It'll give you a class code. So once you're all set up, it'll take you to a screen like this and give you a class code. Um, it's just right on your home screen. You'll just copy that down. If you haven't watched my newsletter website uh, video, you should. It's right up there in the corner right now. And I would put this there. So a little pro tip from a virtual teacher to another. I would put this in that website. I would put it in your newsletter. I would put it everywhere because you are going to have parents ask you for it and this will just minimize emails for you, right? So, um, so I would put it in there. Um, once they access to it one time, it should stay there unless they clear their cash cookies and history, then this will disappear and they'll need that code again. And that's why you should have it in every single e or every single newsletter that you send out or just keep it on the, your website. So that way when you do get an email saying, hey, I cleared my history, or hey, I got a new computer, I don't have the code anymore, can you can you send that to me? And you're like, oh yeah, you know, I'm sorry that happened, or congratulations on your new computer, that's exciting. Um, this is the code, but as a reminder, it's always in our newsletter and it's always in our um, our school 
website or a class website. So you can find it there. So, um, so definitely do that. Once they are ready to log in, they'll enter that code. They'll click on the code or click go, depending on where they are in their journey. Um, and then it'll bring them to a site with all their classmates' names. Now, I've seen teachers just put in one kid, and all their kids have one access to that one um, that one account. But you could be like me. I think there's just something cool about having your own name, so that's what I do. Um, I also feel better knowing that all my kids have access to it. So they'll just find their name. You can make this a little bit more secure and give them all a different code. It has to be different. It can't be the same as far as I'm aware. So, but that'll take up more time, more time for you. Uh, if you know how to do a mail merge, if you have an Outlook or something like that that has that capability, that will make it faster and easier, but it's still going to take time. And so for me, this is just a just for fun resource. My kids don't even have to use this. So they don't have codes. They can just click on their name and as long as it's between 6 a.m. and 4 p.m., they're good to go. So I don't make quizzes for them to use because I measure comprehension a different way. So this is just for fun. But I do like to use this for read alouds, as I said. So when you are in here, um, you can explore for books. You can explore all different kinds of books, even down to the subject matter. Um, I typically will go to uh, their Lexile level. So if it's something I'm using for a lesson or, or just for fun or, or reading to my lower level kids, um, higher level text, because there is a lot of research showing that read alouds will, will help your kids grow in fluency. Um, there's something about listening to uh, fluent reading that really helps. And so uh, I typically will find a book in their in the reading level that they should be in and will find a book of their interest. So if my kids are really interested in penguins, I'll read about that. Or if they're learning about penguins in their science, you know, that's a different, another thing they'll do. Um, I will search for like Minecraft. Cause I think there's some in here. So, uh, yeah, so there's books in here about Minecraft and we'll, we'll find one around or at their level and, and read that. So, because you know, fourth graders are, excited about Minecraft. So there's videos in here for them as well. There's lots of things in here. So I would just take a moment to explore. But like I said, this is my favorite resource that I use for my kids for read alouds and just for fun reading. And as I said, it's, it's really awesome. And there's uh, Big Nate, there's, uh, there's Diary of a Wimpy Kid, there's the original. I'm really, there's one about a a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot that I really, really like. Uh, that's really fun. And my, and kids have, I read it to some kids and they loved it. So lots of ways that you can use this. And again, right now it's free as long as you have their, well, it's always free to you between the hours of six and um, four for your students and 24 seven for you as a teacher. But it is free right now for them, uh, 24 seven, as long as you put in their parents' email addresses, then they have access to it that way. So thank you so much for watching. Remember sharing is caring. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, um, comment, uh, share with your friends and colleagues, because really my, my hope is to help all teachers during this time, whether they're becoming brand new into the virtual world full time or during this uh, season of school closures and you have to do something virtual. So. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye.